In the previous lessons, we've seen how we can perform a sort on multiple columns, and we've also seen how we can use a custom list to create our own sort order. But did you know that you can also use a formula to do a sort on a data set? In the last couple of years, Microsoft have released two new formulas, sort and sort by, and these are dynamic array formulas that we can use to output our sort results anywhere in the worksheet. And that is one of the biggest advantages. If we were performing just a regular sort on this data, we could go up to the data tab and choose one of our sort options. But your data is always going to be sorted over here in these columns. However, now because we're going to be using a formula to do a sort, it means that we can place our sort results anywhere in the workbook. Another advantage of using a formula to do a sort is that we can combine it with other functions such as filter to really unlock the full potential of sorting and filtering. So let's first take a look at the sort function and see how it differs from the sort by function. Now, if we click in cell F5, let's type in equals sort. Now, the sort function has four arguments, but only the first one is mandatory. So we always need to select the array that we want to sort. Now I'm going to be selecting everything in this data set, but just note that you don't have to. Your array could be these two columns and you could just sort on those. So it really depends what it is that you want to sort. Now I'm going to sort all of my data. So let's do control shift down arrow and let's close our bracket because that is the only mandatory argument. Now, when we hit enter, we're going to get our results and notice what it's done here. Because we haven't really specified what we want the sort to do, we've just selected the array. By default, it's going to sort it A to Z by the first column. So for us, that column is the block. And you can see here we're sorted A to Z. Now, of course, you might not want this sort order. This is where we can define alternative sort options. Another thing to note is that both sort and sort by are what we call dynamic array functions, meaning that they have this spill behavior. So even though we've only typed a formula into one cell, the results have spilled out into the other cells. And you'll notice that when we click in some of these other cells further down, we can't actually edit the formula in any of these cells other than the cell that we originally typed the formula into. So if I click on cell F5, I can edit. If I click down here, I can't. So just be aware of that. That's an expected behavior of dynamic arrays. So we've got this set of results. Let's start to make some changes. I'm going to go back up to the formula, comma, sort index. Now, whenever you see index in an argument, it normally means that the formula is looking for an index number as an input. And an index number would be one, two, three, four. So it's asking me here, which column do you want to sort by? And remember, Excel numbers columns from left to right. So if I want to sort by the pass mark, that is column number four, comma. I then get to choose if I want to sort in ascending or descending order. And I'm going to choose descending because I want to see the highest marks at the top going down to the lowest. And then comma, we get to choose if we want to sort by the column or sort by the row. Now I want to sort by row. So let's type in false, hit enter, and let's take a look at our result. So now I can see that, yes, we are sorting by the fourth column, the pass mark column in descending order. We go all the way from 100 down to the lowest mark of 25. Now, the first question I normally get when I show people this is, well, what if I want to sort on multiple columns? Well, you could do that very easily using the sort by function, which we're going to look at in a moment, but you can also do it using sort. So currently I'm sorting by the fourth column, but if I wanted to say sort by the pass mark and then by the exam, I could do that. So if we go back up to the formula and we want to click just here where we have our sort index argument. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in curly braces. So let's open a curly brace. We still want to sort by column number four, but then we want to sort by column number three. And we're going to wrap that in a closing curly brace. So I'm defining sort by column four, then sort by column three. And then the next argument is the sort order. So again, we can wrap this in curly braces. So I'm going to open a curly brace. 
So currently we have minus one. So column four is going to be sorted first in descending order. It's then going to sort by column three and we'll say we want to sort in ascending order for that column. Close the curly brace. So simply by adding those curly braces in, we can choose to sort by more than one column. So let's hit enter and those results will update. The pass mark column sorted in descending order and then it sorts by the exam column in ascending order. And of course, if you want to make any changes, you can just come up here and you can modify the formula. So let's change this to sort in descending order for the exam. So if you take a look at the order of the exam for the top two results at the moment, it goes French then history for the pass mark of 100. If we change this, we should find it switches round to history followed by French. And of course, we could carry on going if we wanted to sort by another column. We can simply add that in by editing the information we have inside the curly braces. So that is how you can use the sort function to sort on one or more columns. Let's take a look at sort by because it is very similar. It's just the way that we select our arrays is slightly different. So let's type in sort by and you can see it says sorts a range or array based on the values in a corresponding range or array. So our first argument again is the array. So we're going to select everything, control shift down arrow comma. Then we can choose which array we want to sort by. So maybe this time I want to sort by the exam. Now, when we're using sort by, we need to select the entire array, comma. Then we can define the sort order. So let's do ascending order, comma, and then we can choose the next column that we want to sort by. So maybe then I want to sort by the block, we need to select the array, and we can define if we want to sort in ascending or descending order. So I'm gonna add a one on the end there. And we can carry on going, selecting arrays and defining how we want to sort them. I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's close the bracket, hit enter, and we should find everything updates. So we're sorting by the exam column, first of all, in ascending order. So that is A to Z, and then we're sorting by the block. So if we take a look at this block of English results just here, you should find that the first column, the block column, is in ascending order, which it is, A to Z. So that's the difference between sort and sort by. A lot of people find it a little bit easier to use sort by if they want to sort on multiple columns because people forget that you can use these curly braces. But you can technically use either to perform a dynamic array sort on your data. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.